We're going to start this service in the way that she wanted it to start. Amen? With music. She was a worshiper. She loved to sing and sing and sing in the shower, sing here, sing down the block, sing in Fifth Avenue, sing in Crown Heights. She was always singing. So everyone stand up. If you don't want to stand up, it's fine, you know, and we're going to worship the Lord together. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to wake up this place with some praise and some worship.
my soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours, and you are mine. Oh, for coming here today. You can all go ahead and be seated. We would just like to make mention that this service is being streamed live right now on Sister Cookie's Facebook. She was big into letting people know about Jesus through the message of media. So we believe this, this is something that she would love to take place. So if you are a friend of hers on Facebook, we ask you to repost it so that other people can hear of the wonderful life of Sister Cookie. But today, I'm going to be um, reading her obituary and letting you know how her journey started and ended. Amen. Cookie Morales, a devoted Christ follower, dedicated wife, mother, sister, aunt, church leader, graduated on Friday, January the 13th, 2017, at 62 years old, after a two-year ordeal with cancer. Socorro Cookie Morales was born on Monday the 8th of February, 1954, to her parents, Luis Rodriguez and Jenny Andino Rodriguez. From the very beginning, the Lord had a special plan for her life. She was always filled with, with life and joy, but there came a point where life wasn't so great. The Lord had another plan. After a rough patch in, in her life in 1987, she was introduced to her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She told her son that she needed a Bible, and that is exactly what she got on Chris, for Christmas. She read the Bible cover to cover, and said she needed to find a church. In 1988, she was excited to go to Brooklyn Tabernacle, but a, but a, fr a friend who was going to Victory Outreach 
but had a friend that was going to Victory Outreach. And so she, dedicate, she decided to go with her. When she entered, she knew she was home. She started her beautiful walk with the Lord. She, was, she always had a love for music, but the Lord started stirring a new song in her spirit. And, her, and a new love for music became a lifestyle for worship. In 1996, she met the love of her life, Jimmy Morales. And in 1997, they got married. Her love for the Lord was greatly shown in her dedication in ministry as a children's chapel teacher and overseer, hospitality overseer, drummer, Congo player, choir member, choir director, worship singer, women's home director, church secretary, United We Can coordinator, regional music leader, graduate of the Victory Outreach School of Ministry, guest speaker at several churches, vocal coach leader, founder of Women Expecting a Miracle Ministry, and a spiritual mother to many. Because of all of this and her compassion to help hurting people, she continually opened the doors of her and Jimmy's home to family and friends in need. Cookie is, a, is survived by the love of her life, Jimmy Morales, who stood right by her side until her last breath. Her son, Pastor Ed Castro, daughter-in-law, Anna Castro, grandsons, Eddie and Ethan Castro, godson, Chaplain P Pedro Pinella, her, her sister, Pauline Rodriguez, nephew, CJ, niece, Cara, and all her friends, family, and spiritual children. She lived a great life, a great life for God. Sister Cookie will love you forever. Amen. This is Sister Cookie's grandson, Ethan, and he's going to read her favorite scripture. Hello, everybody. I'm Ethan, as you probably know. I will read her scripture now. Finally, brethren. Huh? Oh, Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, lo lovely whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. On behalf of me and my brother, we love our grandma very much, and we miss her a lot. Amen. We're going to have a couple of people share from their heart how Cookie, what Cookie meant to them. And one, one of the first people we have is Sister Wilma. And let's give her a warm hand clap. She's been friends with Cookie for quite a while. Praise the Lord, everybody. Excuse me for my voice. As Mrs. Sister Cookie and I both share sickness together. In uh, 2014, I caught three strokes, paralyzed from my neck, my vocal cords down. As I was in a wheelchair, and I remember sharing the story with her. She would give me inspirational things on Facebook and grew my faith. But until... My dad came down from Puerto Rico and put that plant, that seed back. Yes, I was a backslider. Victory Outreach has been my church family for a very long time to the time where the kids did the cry of the young on 60th Street. A lot of them remember it. Um, my daughter at 13, the year 2000, she ended up getting paralyzed from her waist down. And I was I cried at my bedside. I opened up the drawer that had the Bible and the cry of the young flyer. So I knew my daughter was crying. It was a spiritual thing. So I ended up in church, 47th Street and 3rd Avenue. Everybody remember those? That church over there. And that's where I met Sister Cookie. As I sat in the corner, cried, cried for my 13-year-old daughter. I couldn't get out the altar. And Sister Cookie put her hands on me. She picked me up, service started, and I couldn't just contain myself. The Holy Spirit just was upon me. Sister Cookie prayed for me. She gave me 
one of her, also, um, I remember one of her blazers, because of course, I kept going to church, and late in the midnight hour, God's going to come, and that's exactly what happened to my daughter at 13 years old. Um, I went back to the hospital, and sure enough, that late in the midnight hour, my daughter was feeling tingling in her feet. She was praising God as, everything's going to be all right. My sister Cookie told me, everything was going to be all right. And I took that all away. She came out the hospital, and where we went? In a wheelchair, straight to 47th Street and 3rd Avenue. And, you know, that's a backslider. The devil played with me. But just to let you all know, since my strokes, I came back to the Lord. I got a victory. Church of Jesus Christ in Staten Island. I've been there for two years, and God has done wonders. No more wheelchair. Remember Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 was also in my house. I remember Pastor Ed coming into this house, too, and all the kids. So, Sister Cookie, this is our, actually, she used to say, when I go to heaven, I'm going to ask God, why, why, why? And this is why, a time like this. Thank you, Sister Cookie, for being an inspiration in my life. And she will always be my sister cookie. <laughs> amen, amen. Well, we have another one. Like, Cookie had this uncanny thing of just adopting, like, other bad kids. You know? You know? I'm one of them, amen? But we have another one, and his name is Brother Warren. I'm going to call him up right now, and he has something to share about Sister Cookie. Come on, Brother Warren, stop playing. Get up here. Well, we say I'm ready to do this until I see you guys. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm here. But that right there is my mama. That's my mama. Um, coming from Victory Outreach, Atlanta, Georgia. Pastor Jerome at the time. And I came to New York, and pastor said, you need to go to Victory Outreach. Find it. I came. And right away, they adopted me as far as this family. And mom, she had helped to develop me spiritually in a time when I had doubts. I could call my mama. She would talk to me and make everything all right. Mama makes everything all right. I don't know what it is, but something about moms make everything all right. And um, she told me, she said, um, so we're gonna sing a song together. And I said, mom, I can't sing. <laughs> she says, all right, I just need you to be present. <laughs> and, um, and I just wanna let her know, I, 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 love, I, I, love, I love her so much. And I'm going to miss her, but I know that she's in a better place. She's with who she wanted to be the most, with God. And, and I just, and I thank God that he gave me the moment to be able to experience life with her. You know, and, and she said, she told me one thing, I'll let you guys, she told me, she said, you know, she said, Rocky, that's, no one calls me Rocky, but Mama. Rocky, she says, you know, what's the best thing that ever happened to you. I told her, oh, well, I started thinking about the things I did to, that I won awards or this and that. And she says, no, son. She says, I asked you, what's the best thing that's ever happened to you? And I couldn't figure out. But he said, but didn't you, was you in the men's homes? Your life at one time was in shambles and God met you and he took you and embraced you and brought you in when everybody else doubted you, when nobody believed in you. Now I ask you again, what's the best thing that ever happened to you? And now hearing I say, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. I love you, Mama. (laughs) 
Bro, that boy threw a song in there. I didn't even know he was going to throw a song in there. <laughs> Praise God, man. Um, we have someone that's very special. She's an OG. She's an old fool from the old school. And Sister Sandra from East New York. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And she's a friend, a family friend. And, and, and she's a tremendous woman of God. Her family is, is loved. And she's a very dear friend of cooking. Amen. Let's give a warm hand clap. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to try to do this as best as I can. Um, I met Cookie. For those who don't know me, my name is Sandra Diaz. And um, I met Cookie back in 1988 when we both began attending um, Victory Outreach. Um, since the moment that I met her, our hearts connected. Um, she was part of my walk with the Lord. We were both growing together in the things of God, and I always remember cooking being there for me. I have precious memories of her, of us being in the choir. I know there's um, some of us here that were, that were part of that choir. She was my choir director, and, um, and what I loved about her is how she transmitted um, her passion and energy into us, the choir members. The, that passion and energy, energy is something that I carry even to this day when I worship. She taught me how to worship. She taught me not to be embarrassed. He taught me to lift up my hands and give him my all. Amen. Whenever I needed someone to pour my heart, someone to advise me, she was there. You see, Cookie was more than... A friend, she was my sister in the Lord. She was my friend. She was part of my family. And I will always be grateful at how she loved, care, and pray for my family. There was a time back when my son Coco, most of you know him, he was going through his rebellious ways. And when we used to butt heads, he used to run to Eddie, to Cookie's house. And I will always get that phone call from Cookie the next day. Don't worry, he's okay. He can stay here all he wants, you know. And I know that many times she used that opportunities, those opportunities to speak into his life. And for that, I will forever be grateful. Cookie was with me, like they said, through the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss her bubbly personality, her prayers, her wise counsel. I feel so connected to her in so many ways. You see, not only was she was my sister, she was my friend. She was my family. Um, not only was she friend of the family, but as you know, um, my husband, Papo and Jimmy, are more than friends, they're brothers. These people right here are my family. So to Jimmy and Anna, Petey, um, Lita Ethan, Lita Eddie, Natalie, Cookie has left you the greatest legacy, and that's the legacy of her faith. Take it and run with it and continue that race that is before you. To us, she left the greatest example. Many of us, the, the example of never giving up. Many of us are going to go through things, hard things. Never give up. Fight the good fight. One day also, we are going to go through the valley of the shadow of death. This is something that we cannot avoid. We're going to have to go through it. So the greatest example that she left us is that even going through all that she went through, she never let go. She left clinging to Jesus. And that's the greatest example that I want to follow. That I'll be clinging to Jesus till the very end and that I won't give up. 
It's sad and it hurts. But what a blessed hope we have in Jesus that we will be reunited with Cookie. Again, I said, you know, cancer did not beat Cookie. She beat cancer. Because as I speak, she's singing, dancing, and praising the Lord. So again, it was a privilege. I call it a privilege being part of her life and her being part of mine. God bless you. We have someone that flew all the way from across the pond to be here, and that's Sister Stacy. Let's give a warm hand clap to Stacy. Watch yourself. Um, t- today is a really hard day. I met Sister Cookie in 2000 when I first came to New York and her and Jimmy just opened up their home straight away to me. I had met Anna back in 97 at the training center and I walked into Sister Cookie's house and she just opened up her home to me and she said, come, and she made me a part of their family. And when I heard that she was sick, I thought, in myself that she'd get better because she'd always fought through things. But one thing I want to say today is that Sister Cookie, she had the love that would spread 4,000 miles across the pond to me in my need, in my desperate time, in joy. She would send messages. She would say that Jesus loves you. Jesus cares about you. She always had a message a message to share with everyone. Her and Jimmy would always open up their home to invite people in and to tell them about the love and the power of Jesus Christ. And she loved her family beyond all limits. She would do anything for them. If you touched her grandchildren, if you said something bad about her son, if you, she would always be a protector of her family. And today, I know that one thing that she would want us to do is to love and serve the Lord, to know that Jesus Christ died for us. But I just just hope that today is just a, a shining light of who she is. And it is because this room is packed, because she loved. Her love had no limits. It had no boundaries. She continued to love through her, her sickness. I spoke to her at Christmas. That was the last time I spoke to her. And she was telling, she was saying to me, Merry Christmas. She was like, I'm so happy that you're there with your family. But she was in a sick bed, still ministering, still reaching out. And so today, church, I would just say that she lived a life worthy of a seat in heaven. So let's just glorify God that she lived that life and know that 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 legacy will continue throughout her son and her grandchildren and beyond because she loved this place. She loved Brooklyn. She loved New York. She knew that Jesus Christ would come to this place and reach many people. And she did everything that she could to reach those people and today is evidence of that so pastor ed and sister anna with family with family and i'm so grateful that i can be here today amen the last person i'm uh, we're gonna have is a very good friend of ours his name is a uh, pastor kenny mcclendon let's give pastor kenny mcclendon a hand Tremendous man of God. And I I know he has a few words to share about Sister Cookie. Glory to God. You know, it's, it's hard, but it's special about being here today. Almost five years ago, I was at this church, and my wife was laid here in the coffin. And Cookie 
and Jimmy was very instrumental in my wife's journey when she was sick. They would come to the, to the hospital and they would sing songs, worship songs, as we all know that she was a worshiper. She was a worshiper. They would come sing songs and she would minister to me and Jimmy would minister to me. I was all messed up then. But you know what? God has a way of using people at a time that when you need that help to bring them in and give you a relief. How many know what I'm talking about? I came into the ministry in 1989 into, don't say that, Pastor, <laughs> into the Chicago's men's home. At the time, I was married, and my, my marriage was all messed up. And Kathy came into Victory Outreach, and when she came into Victory Outreach, she came into that group that Sister Cookie was running, Women's Expecting a Miracle. And it was there that she ministered to my wife. It was there that God got a hold of her while I was in Chicago. She used to write me and tell me, you know what, how, you know what, that this young lady, Cookie, began to minister to her and begin to help her to understand not just Christianity, but what Victory Outreach was all about. To this day, I am thankful for that because I graduated out of the home. I came back to New York City and regained my marriage. And it was through that that God raised me up through the ministry. It was there where I met Jimmy. Jimmy came into my men's home. And it was there that God began to deal with Jimmy and raise Jimmy up and do the things that he needed to do in Jimmy's life to get him to the place that where he's at today. A mighty man of God. I watched God raise this man up. I watched God turn him upside down and shake all the junk out of him. I watched that with my own eyes. When they got married, I was so happy. I said, what a union here. What a union. What a great union. And they became an example of what a marriage is supposed to be. He became an example of what a husband is supposed to be. God used this couple tremendously. Hmm. Sister Cookie had a lot of courage. <laughs> a lot of courage. Here it is that she was going through her journey with cancer. But as you heard, she worried about other people more than she was worrying about herself. She, she led a legacy. Yesterday at our church, I happened to be able to minister. And one of the things that I talked about was the fact, you know what, that is there's a finishing grace. There's a finishing grace. And how many know that God all wants all of us to finish correctly? He wants us to, to be the winners that we are. Sister Cookie was that person. She finished well. She ran the race. She ran her marathon. She ran the race. And in the end, she was still raising her hand up and glorifying Jesus and loving Jesus, and let each and every person know, you know what, I'm finishing this race. And I'm finishing it right. One thing I want to leave you with is that, see, strong faith brings you strong finish. Strong faith brings you a strong finish. Sister, Cookie has strong faith. So she finished well. Right now we know that she's there in heaven looking down on us 
She's up there with Maureen. She's with Kathy. You know what? And she was all the ones that went before. They all had strong faith and they finished well. I love her. I'm going to miss her just like everyone else will. But I have Brother Jimmy that's still here. And Jimmy, you know how much I love you. Always did, always will. And I'm here for you. Let's give the Lord a good praise offering. <laughs> Pastor and the family, thank for everyone for all the testimonies. But how many of you now know now that we're going to see a good slideshow? Come on, somebody. How many of you are ready to see this slideshow? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. My name is Pastor Raymond Ramos. I'm, a, I'm up here because uh, me and uh, Ed are close friends. Sister Cookie had a, a major impact in my life and my family's life, the Ramos family. 
and the ripple effect goes into our ministry. Um, I'm honored to, to be speaking here. I, speak, I spoke in a lot of places. Um, she was a giant for the Lord. You know, um, I was hearing Pastor Kenny, and I thought about, you know, uh, in Second uh, Timothy where he says, you know, I finished the race, I fought the good fight, and I've kept the faith. And I think about Sister Cookie, and I think about, you know, the race that she ran, and I think about the fight that she fought, and the faith that she kept to the very end. And I don't know if every, everybody here is a believer, but one of the last words that she said after she told Jimmy, you know, I think her last words, I told, she told Jimmy, I love you, Jimmy. She said, salvation. And, and, and while she was transitioning, going home, she was still preaching the gospel. She, she, was still, she still wanted one more for Jesus, you know. And, and, and I don't know if you know Jesus Christ, but if you, if, if you love Cookie, if you know Cookie, I think she wants to know that, that like, she, like I said, she finished, her, she ran her race, she fought the good fight, she, finished, you know, she kept the faith, and now she's going to receive a, a beautiful crown of righteousness that the, that the righteous judge will give her. And in that verse, it says, not just to me, Paul says, but all those who look forward to the Lord's coming. And maybe you're not here and you're not looking forward to the Lord's coming. You don't know Jesus. Religion left a bad taste in your mouth. On behalf of Cookie, if you're her friend or love her or you know her, she would want you to know and taste and see how good Jesus Christ is. That, that there's nothing you can do in this world, there's nothing you can experience, no drink that tastes so good, no drug that gets you so high, no experience that gets you so elevated, like, like a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so if you don't know Jesus Christ, it's not religion. And she lived it. You are a great cloud of witnesses that saw her live out her faith. She fought for her children. She fought for her family. And, she de- and in the name of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit, by the, blood, by the blood of the Lamb, she defeated Satan for her family. Right? And, and then, you know, she kept the faith to the very end. You know, she made decisions that, that, that only a woman that knows God can make. She said, my trust is not in, in, in doctors, even though they're wonderful, but my trust is in the great physician, and I want to go home, and I, and I want to finish my way. And she chose how she, but, but it's important that everything she did, the victory that's found in her, in her family, the legacy that she leaves behind, she, she, she died in dignity, and, and she left a destiny, she lived out. It's incredible what happened with Sister Cookie. In 1987, her life was, 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 was interrupted, Tra- it, it was it was incredibly uh, transformed and changed by the power of Jesus Christ. And she, she, she was converted. She, she, she received the call. And she was committed to Jesus Christ. And so, you know, I thought about if you don't know Jesus Christ, please. Be, there's many pastors. There's many ministers here. I'm not going to, you know, ask you to receive and believe. But I want you to know that if you're here, Sister Cookie does not want to spend eternity if you love her and she loves you without you. And you can't come and see her again without the blood of Jesus washing your sins away. And so if you don't know Jesus and you love her and you know that she cared about you, I would, I would encourage you. I would tell you, from, she said it. She talked about salvation as she transitioned. That, that's, if you don't know Jesus Christ, he loves you. I don't care what, what lifestyle you come from. I don't care what religion you might have served. I don't care what your story is. Jesus Christ loves you so profoundly, and he wants a relationship with you, and he wants you to experience all that cookie experience. And, and he allows you to see it so you can see that it's real and is available to you. But it's only available to those who are in Christ Jesus. And so uh, I'm, very, I'm very blessed. Uh, she, you know, she would lay hands on, on, you know, my, on me and pray for my family. I come from, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for Victory Outreach. Um, I'm grateful for Pastor Ed. I, I was one of those trouble cases that wanted to fight about the Bible and stuff. And Pastor Ed and Petey and Sister Anna, you know, they prayed for me. Sister Cookie prayed for me. You know, many times I said, I don't know if I'm going to make sure you're going to be all right. To him who's able to keep you from falling, she would tell me. You know, so if you're here and you don't know Jesus, please know that, that from, from, from a legacy's perspective, Right? From a woman of God that was a gladiator, that you, that you saw it, you see it. Pastor Ed, Pastor Peter, Minister Peter, you see it. Sister Anna, Jimmy, you, you see the fruit of her faith. She, 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 didn't, welcome, she didn't just sing it, she brang it. You know what I mean? And, and so if you're here and don't know Jesus Christ, we all must travel this road. We all must travel this road. And, and I, you know, the, the, the statistics are 100% out of people are going to pass away and transition into eternity. Where, where will you spend eternity? Where, where will you spend eternity? Jesus Christ has secured your eternity. All you got to do is make a power move like she did in 1987 and receive and believe Jesus Christ. So uh, I'm, I'm going to get out your way in a moment. I'm, I'm going to tell you uh, 
that, I, that I'm indebted. I'm indebted. You know, I think about the Bible, the great cloud of witnesses. I, I feel so grateful. You, you don't get to see, there's a lot of phony baloney Christians. I'm sure you know a couple, right? It, you, 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 it's, it's powerful to be in the presence of a woman where the video matched the audio. You understand what I'm saying? Where, where, where she preached, what she sang, what she taught, what she wrote in the book, the things that, that she lived them out. She was a woman that, that walked, and it's, in, it's incredible how God demonstrated his glory so profoundly in her life now, and now she's in the presence of God walking in glory right now. Because the Bible says, Paul says, to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. And, and before I go, I just want to tell the family, uh, I, I don't, I told Jimmy, you know, my wife's not here, so I can say this now. Um, <laughs> But I told Jimmy that, you know, that, that God sometimes plays favorites, right? And, 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 and it wasn't fair. I don't know how to say this nicely. It, it wasn't fair that, 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 that Jimmy got a cookie, you know what I mean? That, 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 that I don't know why, you know, he didn't do nothing to deserve such a wonderful woman like cookie, you know what I mean? And, and, and so, and some people get something else, you know what I mean? And, and. And you might be here and just don't, don't laugh too much because that's something else that's right next to you. You know what I mean? But you pray before you leave that she can be a cookie one day. You know what I mean? And, and, and so, so I, I want to I want, I want tell you, man, you have something to grieve. And you got something to cry about. The Bible says we don't mourn like the world, but we mourn. We mourn. God bless you with a powerful gift. You know, and she graduated. And she, like I said earlier, cookie gets a special seat because of her testimony. You know, in, the, in, that, in that scripture where God will award to the, award me something that, you would, that is, is almost a form of compensation. And, 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 your, and her faithfulness and her obedience and her devotion, God will compensate her. What you do here is a preparation for eternity. And so she gets a good seat, not like me and Petey, you know. We get to wave at them, throw up signs, you know what I mean. But, but because she went and graduated before us, and, and it's funny because in, in a lot of religions, right, in a lot of religions, we, we should be like this. When someone is born is when they, we should mourn, right? Like, oh, you don't know what you're getting yourself into, man, you know. And, and then when someone dies, they, we, we're supposed to celebrate. We're supposed to celebrate. This, this, this is not a testimony. This woman lived out her faith. There's fruit. You can't fight with fruit. There's fruit in the front. Like, this is incredible what God has done, the way he demonstrated. So uh, I'm, I'm going to get out the way. Uh, I just wanted the family to know it's okay to mourn. It's okay to, you know, the, the, one of the, it depends, if you, depending how scholarly you are, <laughs> depending on Bible college, I don't know if you are, if you're a victor, you should be going to Veti, all right? I think there's a new name now. But if you're not going to according to where you've learned your, your, your theology, one of the, 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 the shortest verse in the Bible is Jesus wept, right? Depending where you learned your theology. <laughs> if you're reading the Hebrew or the Greek. Anyway, my point is that if Jesus wept, it gives you permission to weep. You know, 100% God. And he wept. And he demonstrated emotions. So it's okay to, you know, and, 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 and for some people, the grandkids, maybe you here, you don't understand why a woman of God like this, why would it, you know, I remember my mother had cancer. And I said, God, if you, t I'm going to go speak in Spain. I'm going to tell everybody about your healing power. God, I'm going to speak in Africa. God, just heal her. And I'm going to tell people. And God said, no. God said, no, she did a time here. Your prayers are self-centered. It's time, for, it's, it's time for her to come home. She finished her race. You finish yours. And, 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 and it, I had to grieve. I had to grieve. I had to know that she's in glory, and I had to worship God with a broken heart, knowing that God is still good, even though I wasn't feeling too good. God bless you guys. Good evening, everyone. This is my spiritual mama here. And she spoke to me last month, um, just shared her heart with me about a lot of things. And she requested that I sing a song, but she didn't tell me what song. So I had a search for one. And I just pray that this song really ministers to you today.
Okay, I'm reading a poem from that Cookie wrote called My Prayers. Cookie was my mama boo. And when we used to talk, we used to talk for hours. It was used to be for only two hours. No lie, I'd be leaving like in 10 hours. I just hope she don't get tired of me now because I'm going to be talking to her 24 7. So get ready for it. <laughs> so she wrote a um, poem called My Prayers. And it starts out Lord, I keep falling in love with you more and more. Each passing day, your grace is amazing, your mercy tender. Each of which I call upon daily, Lord, let the perfection of you within cancel the imperfection of me. From glory to glory, from day to day, you mold me until the day of Jesus. I will strive, I will press on, be my guide. Yesterday I praise you, today I praise you more. Yesterday I worship you, today I'll worship you sweeter. Yesterday I seek you, today I want to see your face. Yesterday I needed you, today my need for you is greater. Lord, yesterday I love you, today I love you more. Cookie Morales. All I can say, I really identify to this because my path is getting greater and greater. And I thank her for allowing me to understand everybody has a different path. You just go with the flow of your own. And I'm going to miss you. I love you. Amen. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to hear for a few family members and see another slideshow. And then we have an amazing speaker, Pastor Eddie Ramirez, uh, will be uh, sharing. So I think the first person we want to call up is a person who knew her for a very, very long time. And we want to call up Colina Ramos. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Colina. I was just told a few minutes ago that I was going to speak. So I don't have anything ready. I'm just going to speak from the heart. I know Cookie since high school. We were cheerleaders together. We went to the prom together. And we were friends. Since then, I won't tell you what. My, that'll tell you my age. No, <laughs> we're the same age. Um, so she always had a special place in my heart and in my family's heart. Um, I helped her with Eddie. He's like a son to us. We raised, you know, she always said in one of the um, sermons that she gave for Mother's Day at church um, how I was part of her life in helping her. Um, but, you know, I just did it. I didn't. It didn't mean, it didn't mean like I was going out of my way. I just did what I had to do. So um, two things that I thought about when I was sitting there. She did say the word salvation. And she said it to one of my daughters. She trusted my daughter so much when it came to her health. She wanted, she would ask her, are these numbers good? What do I do now? What do I say? Um, and nobody could rub her feet but my daughter. <laughs> you know, everybody else, they were hurt, but not my daughter. So, And then my other daughter said something very interesting. She said, this couple, Jimmy and Cookie, they taught me what love is by seeing how much you loved Cookie and Cookie loved you, Jimmy. And she said, and they taught me about faith, having faith in God. So she had a very big impact on them also. And when I was telling my husband, he said, oh, yeah, I write to her on Facebook. I said, what? <laughs> he said, yeah, we send each other messages, and I send her cute little things. I didn't even know that. <laughs> so, you know, she connected to all of us in a certain way, and I'm truly going to miss her. I love her very much. And like all of you, I know you loved her, too. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And I just want to take a moment to recognize all you guys. We got pastors here that came from far, people that came from far, people who are not used to being in church. Thank you. Thank you. I know you're just like, how much longer? You know, 
<laughs> just a little bit longer, amen? Uh, and we, we, we thank you, man. And, and, and all the people who donated a GoFundMe, I was, I'm, I'm floored by your generosity. And I'm floored that everybody has a story. Neighbors that live in a building, lawyers that helped them with a power of attorney, you know, Greg, one time she was in the hospital. This is a real quick story. I got, I'm looking at Greg. She was in the hospital. She was in Kings County. And you know, sometimes they treat you eh, 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 right? And Greg made a phone call. And then they were like, well, you didn't tell me she was a very important person. <laughs> you didn't? And like the head, what's Jessica? The head of all surgery in the hospital wanted to meet with me. You know, and I was just like, and then she had one surgery. We made a long line. And they were like, man, we better do a good job with her, you know. <laughs> and I just want to thank you guys. I want to call my wife, Anna, uh, her daughter in love. Amen. And she wants to share a few words. Amen. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I know you loved Cookie as well. And, and, um, well, what I'm gonna share is not in any specific order. My English professor would be raising his eyebrows right now at how I structured this, um, but praise God. I wanna thank Monty and Louisa. Could they stand up, please? Is Monty Carnegie here and Louisa Spadafino here? If they are not here, please, and Louisa, thank you. Is Monty here? No, is he he's not here? Okay, well, Monty, wherever you are, and if you're watching this, thank you. Um, we called these people. I want to thank, um, thank you for your amazing support this week, Monty and Louisa. Um, we called and they were there in minutes. Um, thank you, Lizette. I know, I know you're her daughter too, but, but thank you. Because sometimes we forget to tell family thank you. And I'm big on thank yous. I have a bunch of thank you cards in my bag. You know, I just don't have enough for everybody, okay? Sorry, sorry. So now I gotta get sorry cards. Okay, uh, Lisette, thank you for um, staying there all these nights and giving her the medicine that she needed that we just couldn't give her to make her feel better. Thank you. Thank you for staying there late in the midnight hour to tend to her and to your dad. Um, even with your son by your side. Thank you, Pastor Raymond, for your friendship and support. And to your family for releasing you to do what you do. Thank you, Ramos family. Uh, thank you, Alcanza Victoria Brooklyn Church. Isn't this church beautiful? Oh my gosh. Okay, you saw how she was dressed, right? She didn't want to be at the funeral home. She wanted to be here. All right, because this is a very pretty church, and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into the making of this beautiful church. And thank you, Pastor Eddie and Sister Marty and all the staff back there. Um, we called. We asked. They're like, yeah, whatever you guys need. We're like, well, we actually need it for a while. They're like, okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so many thought I was her daughter, and they thought that Ed was her son-in-law. And I always laughed at that, right? Because when you hang around somebody for a long time, you start to look like them, you start to talk like them. So whenever you call their house, they say, uh, you've reached the supers of St. Mark's, leave a message, right? And I pick up, I go, hello. And then they try, doo -doo 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 -doo. and I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mom, <laughs> it's for you. <laughs> you know, when you, you're around somebody that much and you start to mimic them, you know, and I pray that my life can be a mirror, a reflection of, of if I can grow up to be like her, praise God, and, and, and my mother too, who's here, Maria. Mom, mommy, mommy, wave your hand in the air, like you did to me when I used to go to your church. Wave at me, mommy. <laughs> oh, payback, love you, ma. My mother's a woman of God, though. She saved many years. I know the Lord because of her. And, um, but um, she knew that I would be her daughter-in-law the moment I walked into her church, which is a little creepy for me. Because I didn't know church was like that. And I was like, oh my gosh. And actually she was like in the altar and singing with Monty actually. And I remember that moment. She's like, oh, that's why. Because my husband just recently broke off an engagement with someone who shall remain nameless because that's how it's going to be. And I have the mic. Um, <laughs> But um, she knew, right? And one time we went to this women's conference, and I was like, can I borrow your Bible, Sister Cookie? We're on the plane, so I have nowhere to go. I opened the Bible, and my picture's in there. Just me. I was like, why is my picture in her Bible? This, okay, this is getting weird, right? 
And it turns out that she prayed for a lot of couples. She was the original matchmaker. It's not that Patty lady that you see on TV, even though it's very interesting, but she really prayed for couples. And some couples would go up to her to ask them for prayer. It's, it's almost like, God, do you approve? You know, and she knew before I did, so that was cool. Um, God told her before he told me. But she was also a prayer warrior. She would pray at all times. She would be the sweetest, soft-spoken grandma, right? And then when she had to go into her prayer room, she would shut the door and she'd be like, Oh, Father God, I pray, Father God, on top of your life. And she'd come out. <laughs> right? So one time my husband got sick, right? And then, <laughs> little lady, I love you, but I got to share this. My husband got sick and he went to the hospital. So he started binding up like the devil and getting all mad. He's only four years old, right? And then actually, Titi Carlina was on the phone and she heard it. She's like, what's going on back there? I was like, I have to let you go. I have to let you go. I was like, oh, Eddie, it's okay. We're just going to pray for daddy right now. And I had to call her up. I was like, mom, what are you doing? Over there? Nothing. No, I don't pray like that in front of them. I go, well, they're listening to you and they're praying like you now. And they're, they're scared other people you know <laughs> okay so but it was cool I'll take that she was my choir director she taught me how to sing my vocal cord coach so that was the first ministry I joined when I came to church because I was like oh so what can I do I was like well, I like to sing I'll go in there I don't know what I was doing but I, I had a rhythm tempo I could I could shout you know I, I had to learn how to sing though but that's okay um, hospitality she showed me how to serve and give my best let me tell you, she would have fed each and every one of you that are in this place right now. Because you know why? Her goddaughter wanted to do that. I go, you want to buy donuts for everybody? Well, they don't let us eat in this church inside. You would have to go outside, right? But it's all good, right? But you're eating of the bread of the word of God, whether you realize it or not, okay? Uh, she wanted to see each and every one of you in church, and now you're here. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, see, Mom, you did it. <laughs> um, praise God. Um, but she was my mother in love, uh, my co mother, as grandmother, one of the grandmothers of my children. She was my confidant, many times my counselor when I needed a strong woman of God. I would talk to her, complain about her son and her grandkids. That was like my 311. I wish I had an app. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. And I would kid around with my husband and say, that's it. I'm tired of all of you. I'm leaving you guys. I'm going to your mother's house. Right? Uh, she would spoil my kids, and I noticed that they would come back fatter and richer. I was like, who gave you all that money? Why don't you close fit anymore? And uh, her and Jimmy just fatten them up and spoil them. Um, thank you for that. Um, Oh, she taught me a lot, but I taught her how to use the internet. Oh, I created a monster with that. So to all the friends on Facebook, welcome, eons, everybody, thank you. Um, and I was truly blessed to have her in my life. It was an honor to serve her, to wash her, to cook for her, to drive her around when she wanted to see her dad in uh, Florida because he couldn't come to her and they had a very rocky relationship. It was on her bucket list, and they told her to go as soon as possible. So the next day, after the last day of school, we were on that plane to Florida, and we did that. She was a wonderful mother-in-law to me. She was a wonderful grandmother to our boys. She taught me how to live for Christ and how to die for Christ. And one more thing that I know she'd want you to remember, to take care of yourself. You're going to hear a lot of stuff about the spiritual and about your soul, and I pray that your ears may be open and, the, and your eyes may be open to really see what they're really telling you. They're trying to get to you. But take care of yourself. Love yourself. Get a checkup on your birthday. Let that be your gift to you. Check yourself out in the shower. Check yourself out with the doctor. Get a blood test. If you feel something strange and funny going on in your body, don't worry. It's not just because you skipped the gym. It might be something else serious, you know. Um, but early detection of cancer or illness is best. Love yourself and love your family while they are still here. There is power in love. There is power in forgiveness. Jesus knew that. He knew that. He knew what you would do. He knew what you're doing right now, and he still died for you. And I pray that that love 
that Cookie had for you and that you had for Cookie will now overflow to those around you or overflow to your family, maybe that you're mad at, that you don't even talk anymore, that you just put on a blacklist, on a hit list, whatever it may be. Life is truly short. I saw her Sunday. And then Monday, it just rapidly escalated from there, and I couldn't tell her anymore. I, I, I told her Sunday what God told me to tell her. Well done, that good and faithful servant. You ran your race, and don't worry, we'll take care of Dad. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We love you. God bless you. Amen. I want to call up her son, my brother, Petey. Hey, church. Um, I, I was trying to write something, but, man, I just put it down. I tore it up. I, I was just all messed up. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to share something from my heart. Um, you know, I heard a quote um, said that um, in a child's mouth, in a child's mouth, uh, mother is the closest thing to heaven. Um, and, and she was the closest thing to heaven to me. Uh, I went through some ups and downs in my life. Um, I remember the first time I came to church, we joke about it, me and Ed. I remember I came to the altar and we were praying and somebody went to hug me. And I was like, get off me. Don't be hugging me. You know, and I was just an angry kid, bro, man. I didn't want nobody to touch me. I didn't want nobody to talk to me. You know, and she enveloped me with love, man. I mean, she just love, just, just love, you know, and... Um, and she taught me not to, your life is not how loud you speak. Your life is how loud you live. And I try to live a loud life, not by the octaves of my voice, but the octaves of my life. And because she showed me that, she took me to the backyard, right, and she barbecued, made some good hamburgers. And as she was cooking on that stove, brother, getting it done, she was ministering to me, talking to me. You know, my mother gave her custody for me. And this woman said no, because you know why? Because you are still his son. That spoke volumes to me, volumes, volumes. And, you know, she loved me. There was never a time in my life that I never felt like I was her son. Not one time. I met this young man at eight years old, and we've been running hard together since we were eight years old, and I, there's nothing I want to do for this woman. She opened up her home. She opened up her life. I've seen inadequacies. I've seen faults, and through her faults, I've seen her victories, and it taught me through my faults that I have victory. Can I hear an amen? That no matter how many times you fall down, that you get back up. And you get back up, and you keep trucking. You know? And that woman taught me how to fight taught me how to fight, how to be a good husband, because I really didn't have too many good men in my life. She taught me even how to be a man. You know, she taught me, <laughs> taught, me how to, taught me so many things, man. You know, I am who I am today because of who she was. And she taught me how to pray. She taught me how to get a hold of God. She taught me how to close the room and said, Petey, don't be worrying about what other people think. You need to worry about what God thinks. And the more you're worrying about what God thinks, the more people are going to respect how you think. You know, and this woman spoke volumes into my life. And now I'm a chaplain. I'm a husband. I got two beautiful kids. I got a beautiful family. Why? Because she poured into my life. She took a kid from the Bronx that was hungry at and dirty. I was jumping on roofs. I was killing cats. I was blowing up cats with M80. I was shooting people with slingshots in the butt. I was a bad kid, man. You know what time it is, eh? I was doing all types of havoc. But she said, P, I'm going to love you the way that you are, dirty and raggedy. And I'm going to clean you up. And I'm here today. Why? Because this woman is a woman of God. A woman of God. I'm going to tell you, church, I don't know a lot about church, but I know a lot about God. I know a lot about God. I, you, know, I'm not, you know, I'm not really too political. Sometimes I'm a little crazy. Ed knows that. You know, you know, that's why I'm still having problems with my minister's license. Amen? But that's neither here or there. You know? That's why I have a heart for the gang member. That's why I have a heart for the drug addict. That's why I have a heart to go to Rikers Island. That's why I still go to the Covenant House. That's why I still do things without telling nobody. Why? Because she did things without telling nobody. She did it to God. 
Cookie, I love you and, and I will miss you, but thank you for pouring your life into my life. Amen. Hey, man. I told you he was going to go like this. Um, if you're young and you watch Love and Hip Hop, everybody talks about how Papoose is the best husband. I want to introduce you to the real best husband. I want to introduce you. This man came into her life, and uh, he came in. He was hyped. And I was like, Mom, I don't know about this one. <laughs> Mom, I don't know about this one. And then, you know, and you can only argue with my mom so much, you know what I mean? Because she, she, she was about that action, you know, she'll hit me. Um, and, but man, Jimmy, you did it, bro. You did it. Good job, bro. Last breath. Her, her last breath, she not only said I love you, she turned towards you. Come up here and share a few words, Brother Jimmy. Let's give a hand for Brother Jimmy Morales, the best husband in Kings County, in the tri-state area, the love of Boo's life. Come on, give God praise. Hey Amen. I did my mornings. I did my crying. What I want to do is, is for the just five minutes, I want the worship team to come up. I just want to sing a song. Because that's what she told me to do, is to sing a song. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Come on now. This is about worship and praise and glorifying the Lord. And goodness what God has done. Amen. I did my crying in my home. Amen. And we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands. Yeah, that's what she wants me to rejoice. She want me to sing for her. Come on now. Hallelujah. Come on. Yeah. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Come on, somebody lift up the somebody name. Lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. And stop your feet. Praises to the King of Kings. Come on, worship. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Somebody lift up the name. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Somebody lift up the name. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Come on, and clap your hands, stop your feet. Lift your praises to the King of Kings. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Lift him higher, higher and higher. Lift him higher, higher and higher. Higher and higher, higher and higher. To the King of Kings, somebody lift up the name of Jesus in this place.
Magnify yeah. his name. Yeah. Give him glory and give him honor. Yeah. He's worthy to be praised. Yeah. In the good and the bad. Yeah. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go, baby. There you go, honey. You got it. We worshipers. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, honey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for discipling me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for encouraging me, my love. You are worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you. Thank you. That's what she wanted me to do. It's worship. Give him praise. Don't testify and cry. I did all that. And I'm still going to do all that. God is good, church. Remember, keep the good fight of faith. Remember who's first. Jesus, family, church, victory. In spite of what you go through in life. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Give them all the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to sing no song, so y'all need to sit down. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was lit. Amen. Amen. I knew something was going to happen, but I didn't think that was going to happen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not, thank God the worship team is not old school. Like back in the days, the youth would be all outside, you know, drink, drinking 50 cent water. You know what I mean? Amen. So we have a great slideshow, and Pastor Eddie's going to preach a powerful message. And I just got some stories, right? You want to hear stories, right? You don't want to, you don't want to hear me pontificate on the, how, she, how she raised me, contrary to the Dr. Spock um, book. Um, she got saved in her bedroom in 1987, miraculous. She tried to kill herself, but God said no. She didn't know no details. She didn't know no theology. She was just like, you got to buy me a Bible. So I said, like, all right, I'll buy you a Bible. That's all you want for Christmas. That's it. You don't want nothing for the, you know, clothing store learners. You know, there was like that learners on Fifth Avenue. You sure? You're not going to get funny with me. No, I'm not just about Bible. So you got it. So I went to Fifth Avenue from the city bank on 54th Street. And there was this bootlegger selling books, and he had a Bible. And then there was this Bible at the time. It was called The Book, right? And everybody had The Book in the 80s. He so says, I want to buy that Bible. How much is it? And he was like, $10. I said, that old poppy, you got that from the hotel. What are you talking about? I'll give you $3. I'm haggling. My mom's destiny's at hand. And I'm like, I only got like a dollar, you know. So I get her the Bible, and I'm like, this is your Christmas present. This is your Christmas present. She's like, yeah, yeah. So she took the Bible. She read it from cover to cover. She don't know no chronological order. She didn't know what the numbers meant. Um, she, you know, she didn't say 1 Corinthians. She said 1 Corinthian. You know, she didn't know nothing. She read it from cover to cover. And it was scary. But I just didn't want her depressed no more. I just didn't want to get high no more. So I'm like, yo, this is working. You want another Bible? He had a brown one, you know. And then he, she didn't know what church to go to. Nothing. But she had his friend named Rebecca Melendez. Rebecca, if you're watching this, thank you. And then she called Rebecca and she said, Becky, you still going to Brooklyn Tabernacle? Becky's like, girl, I don't go to Brooklyn Tabernacle no more. And she's like, where you go? She was like, my husband's in his rehab and it's called Victory Outreach. And I go and I support him on Sundays. So she's like, where's it at? She was like, 61st Street. So she's like, Ed, you're taking me to church. And I said, God didn't talk to me. <laughs> But I just didn't want her crying no more. I used to come in the bedroom. She'd be all fainted. You know, I just didn't want to see that no more. So like, okay, I'll take you. I'll take you. I called the car service, 435-0909. I still remember. And then I said, where's the church? She said, 61st Street at 5th Avenue. I said, we're going to 60th and 5th Avenue. We're well, we thought we were going to OPH. Because there ain't no church on 61st and 5th. I know, I know 5th Avenue like the back of my hand. Right? I'm like the anthropologist of Sunset Park, right? I know, I know. So I'm, we're taking the car, and I'm like, right here, papi, right here, right here, right here, uh, aquí mimo, right? That's, that's all the Spanish I know. And then she said, 61st Street. I was like, mom, the church is right here. It's like a castle. It's right here. She said, 61st Street. So he keeps going. And I don't, I don't see no church. I don't see no bells. I don't see no cross. And there was a little storefront. I didn't even have a sign. So we get out the car, and I'm like, the, the church is back there. 
So we walk in, and I saw a guy named Junior Ramos. And I kind of seen Junior Ramos in the streets. And they had a coat check policy. I had a jet starter jacket. So he's like, can I take your coat? I said, you may not take my starter jacket. <laughs> and my mom, she had like a rabbit or something. And she was taking it off. I said, I put it right back on her shoulder. We good, Papa. We good. So we, we went in the back. And we sat in the back. And everybody's singing. And then they sing it loud. And it's like in Spanglish. And then they start praying in tongues. I said, oh, this is like that Saturday night church where everybody wears white. <laughs> and she's like, shut up. <laughs> so I said, all right. And I remember this woman sang. I ain't gonna say her name, but she sang. And she was crying. And she was broken in the Holy Spirit. I didn't know what that is. So I was like, mommy, why is nobody helping her? She's crying. You know, in our culture, there's like 15 women hug you, they put a bani in your mouth, you know. And I was like, this is an emotionally unsafe place. People are crying, no one helps you. From then on, I developed a drag problem. She continued to drag me to church. Misery likes company, so I drank Petey. <laughs> I was like, Mom, you know who really needs church? Petey. <laughs> amen, amen. But I thank God for that storefront church. I thank God for those 100 songs. I thank God for those 97-minute sermons. I thank God for those three offerings. And the pledges, and the more pledges, and the choir practices, and the church eight days a week. P pray about that. God will show you what that means, right? Because she changed. She changed. She was real. She was the real deal, dude. She was, she's not perfect. Come on, you know. But she was the real deal, and I thank God for that. And I know nothing about my mom. She loved family. She re redefined family, right? You guys are all family. You guys are family, right? Like, Family time, real family. Like praying, oh, no, 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 she had no, no. praying for you and crying. And, then I, and she redefined family. Like, you family. Like, Petey, right? So, Petey graduated in Dewey. I graduated from 50 once, right? Because I'm a little bit more scholarly than he is, right? <laughs> <laughs> but he's faster than me. He's faster than me. Probably a little cuter, too, right? And then, so, and Petey didn't have a great graduation. Right? Now I went to school. You went to 51s, I think. Somebody, right? So it was a little yuppie ish, right? So then my mom was like, but this is what's going to happen. Petey, you're going to bring your gown to his graduation. Right? So I'm like, hold up, mom. This is my graduation. Dewey happened last week. And she was like, this is family, right? So I know the yuppies. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to tell these teachers, right? So I'm like, mom. I don't think they're going to like that. And she, I don't give a bleep, bleep, bleep what, they, what these white people like. That's my son. And I said, okay, okay. I'll tell you another story. My family, the Castro Roman and those other names, family, right? They had a reunion in uh, Florida, right? What's your name of your the old job? Universal something, right? Universal Park of 100 Degrees. Universal Studio. So then my mom goes, you know the Castro Roman family's having a reunion? Right? And I'm thinking like, you're not, you're Morales. <laughs> right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking about going. You can't go. And she was like, the question is, are you going? I'm already paying my ticket. <laughs> we would have leadership meetings in church, right? And then we would do something. And she was like, oh, I'm not available Tuesday night. I'm, with, I, I, I'm ministering at a church, my church. And she would come here. I think one of the, the nights, like Wednesday or Tuesday or something like that, to do vocal training. It was non-negotiable because she was with her family. And that, she just, she has a sister, right? You know, my mom was like a social mediaologist, right? Um, and she, every person named Pauline Rodriguez, she was like, hi, my name is Cookie, is Louis your father? And she looked for her sister, like MacGyver, like Magna P.I., for years, she found her sister. So she's in the hospital, right? She's like dying, and she's like doing rehab, she don't know if she can walk. So Anna finds out, miraculously, uh, her father's phone number. We call her father. Now, she has a questionable past with her dad, right? But family. He gets on the phone, and I'll be like, hi, this is Cookie's son. Here's Cookie. Daddy! And she's talking to him. Family. Her friends from Borough Park. Family. She was telling me that she would defend her friends and fight for her friends. 
She loved her family. And she loved hurting people. All right, so she, like 18 people live with her at different times. I'm going to tell you about one lady. She was cracked out. Her name was Debbie, right? She was like, ha, ha. And I came home, and she, my mom was like, say hi to Debbie. And I was like, mom, can I talk to you for a second in the kitchen? <laughs> She's going to rob us blind. I got my Nintendo, right? So, so I'm going to tell you. So she loved Debbie. Debbie was like, you know, her brain. It took a long time to catch up. So I went to Rainbow Park, 56 and 6. I'm playing ball. And my mom said, come home at this time. And you know, you, get, you lose track of time. And you know what she did? She sent Debbie to go get me. <laughs> so I'm playing ball. And I said, like, Annie. <laughs> Annie, your mother wants you. And everybody in the block was like, yo, that's your girl, son? <laughs> that's your girl? Yo, introduce me to your girl. You scared, son? You scared? And I'm like, Debbie, go back home. De oh, she lives with you, son? Because <laughs> my mom was always redefining family. And, you know, I say, my mom loved God. She was, she was praying in the Holy Ghost, dying. And I said, you know what she's doing? She's trying to go to heaven like this. <laughs> She's singing and praying in the Holy Ghost. Right? I said, Jimmy, what's she doing? She's praying in tongues. I said, Jimmy, is she okay? And then you asked her what she wanted, and she said, uh, applesauce. Right? I thought she was going to say, like, a, a Bible, applesauce. So, yo, she, lo she loved everybody. She loved God. She loved people. She was a professional Christian. Like, that's all she wanted to do. Like, just serve God. That's it. Just serve God. And ministry mattered to her. We got this last slideshow before Pastor Eddie comes up. And ministry was very important to her. Ministry was very important. Her family in Newark, her family at Bridgeport, her family doing ministry was very important. She served God, but she used ministry as an outlet. And I want you to enjoy this last slideshow before Pastor Eddie comes. to myself Quería decir in my mind en mi mente. the scriptures would come out wrong las mal. because there was so much happening to my body Porque and my mind at that time mucho en mi en ese but the one thing I was able to say Pero algo, la cosa que in yo myself decir, en, en mí misma, 
the blood of Jesus la sangre de Cristo the blood of Jesus la sangre de Cristo I was glad when they said unto me oh let us go into the house of the Lord happy Sunday everyone God bless start your week off with giving him praise and thanks because he is worthy and he loves you with an everlasting love God bless I got a call from an old friend We laughed about how we had changed But I could tell Things weren't going as well As he claimed He tried to hide his feelings But they only gave him away The longer I listened, the more I kept wishing that I knew the right words to say. Somebody here say the Alguien blood diga of Jesus. La sangre de Cristo. Somebody shout Alguien out right diga, now the blood of Jesus. La sangre de Cristo. But there is power in the blood of Jesus. Hay poder en la sangre de Cristo. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Hay poder en la sangre de Cristo. No hay nada más. I can say anything else. No hay nada más. No hay nada más. I can do anything else. No hay nada más. I can speak for myself. Yo no hablo por mí mismo. I call down in my spirit. Yo lo siento en mi espíritu. The blood of Jesus. La sangre de Cristo. The blood of Jesus. La sangre de Cristo. I believe for you tonight. Yo creo por ti the blood of Jesus que la is going to cleanse you. Te va a it's going to heal you. Te va a sanar. It's going to give you victory. Te va a dar la victoria. It's going to bring you through. Te va a pasar a the blood of Jesus. La sangre de Cristo. Nothing else compares to it. Nada más se compara. If you can't say anything else in your life, you call si out no the blood of Jesus. Más, solo llama la sangre de Cristo. I'm believing right now. Yo estoy creyendo ahora For mismo. you to get your victory. Para tu For you to get your breakthrough. Ves a tu For you to get your healing. Ves tu Praise God. Why don't we give God a good hand for that? I wanted them to, to keep letting that roll. That was a, a very recent uh, opportunity we had to have Sister Cookie here with us. And she ministered on a Friday night. And I could tell you from the moment that God, you know, brought her here, she stepped down, came down, and right when she stepped up on this pulpit, the Holy Spirit was all over her. And that's uh, a memorable night. God really touched a lot of people, and through her sickness, God used her to heal people. And that's, that's very ironic, right? It's, it's powerful how God will use us in our brokenness to, to be able to minister life to other people. And tonight... And on behalf of my wife, Mari, myself, and the church here, Alcance Victoria, we just want to offer our deepest condolences to Jimmy. You know, man, bro, I, you know, I'm going to be praying for you, and, and I know you loved your wife, and I know she loved you too, and you, you were just so faithful to the end, you know, and, and you know, the, the scripture says to death do us part, and you lived it, bro. I mean, and I really have a lot of respect for you for that. And I want to offer you our, our deepest condolences. We really are standing with you in this time. And then all of the family, Pastor Ed, you know I love you. You know Anna. And then Petey, man. I know there's a, a lot of family and, and Sister Cookie was loved. And I know we've been here a while tonight and we've been uh, celebrating Cookie's life. But 
Tonight, I just want to take a few minutes. I'm not going to take long because I believe the message has been very clear. And it's not about us tonight. It's about her. And I just want to speak something that the Lord laid in my heart today as I was just soaking in the presence of the Lord and asking God to just give me something to share tonight. And I'm going to read Psalm 116.15. And it reads like this. It says, The death of one that belongs to him is precious to the Lord. And when I look at this evening tonight, as we're here, one of the things that I was speaking with Sister Anna right now as we were viewing Cookie, is that Sister Anna tells me, Pastor Eddie, one of the things I could tell you is that Sister Cookie not only taught me how to live, but she taught me how to die. And that's actually one of the thoughts that I wrote here this morning. Because the last times that I seen Cookie, which was actually when she went through her first surgery... And I remember Pastor Ed let us know to pray for her, and, and we went out there. We went to that hospital, and I remember in that moment, I actually believed that Cookie may have gone home that, that day. And it was a very critical surgery that she went through there. And I remember that when she came out of that, she told me, and she said, Pastor Eddie, because I was one of those also that would communicate a lot with her through Facebook. And we would message each other. And she said, Pastor Eddie, I just want to thank you for the prayers. Because even though I could not talk and I could not move. But I could hear every word you were saying when you were praying for me. And recently, I could tell you it's been a rough beginning of the year for us. Because not only are we here with uh, Sister Cookie, but my wife and I just came back from spending Christmas and the New Year with another beautiful woman of God that, that went home under the same circumstances. And right now we're here and then we fly out in a few days and we're going to go to that service and and we're going to participate in that homegoing service. And it's been a very rough beginning of the year. Because we're losing or we've lost beautiful saints of God. And as I've been surrounded by saints passing these days. One of the first things that comes to my mind. Is that I'm reminded of the reality of earthly death. See, no matter what we say, or as much as we go to the gym, or as much as we eat right, as much as we rest and sleep properly, as much as we use anti-aging creams and even facelifts and skin pools and everything we do, the reality of earthly death is there. See, it's there. See, it's real. It's, it's real. It's written. It's unavoidable. And it's coming for every single one of us in this place. And I'm also reminded not only of the reality of earthly death, but also of our resistance to death. See, we as human beings are very resistant to death. And even as we could many times be looking at a terminally ill person, our conversations do not go there many times. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to go there. Nobody wants to say anything. Nobody wants to speak about what if. Because all of us are expecting a miracle. But what I want you to understand is that even though all of us 
are expecting or were expecting a miracle, I want you to understand that in God's eyes, the gift of eternal life is a miracle within itself. See, that is a miracle within itself. To be able to transition, to transition, that's a hospice word. That's a chaplain word. That's a, that's a medical term when you are transitioning. To be able to transition and still be alive and pain free and tear free and burden free and even debt free. Hello somebody. In the presence of Jesus is the greatest miracle that any human being can experience. See, but the funny thing is that all of us here, everybody wants to spend eternity with Jesus Christ, yet none of us wants to die. See, we don't want to die. We say, yes, I'll die, just not yet. I'll die just uh, someday. See, but I think tonight that God wants us, the Holy Spirit wants us to view earthly death in a different way, in a different light, as a bridge rather than an end, as a door to a greater purpose rather than something so final. Because to lost people, death is final. And that is the pain of it. See, the truth tonight, my brother, my sister, my friend, is that sooner or later, all of us here will have to cross this bridge. See, all of us here will have to go through that door. And I believe that if we think or if we believe that, if we accept that, if we resolve that, then I believe that our greater question becomes, where will this bridge lead me? See, where would this bridge lead me? Because as I read scripture, Hebrews 9.27 reads and it says, And just as each person is destined to die once, and after that comes the judgment. See, this is the word of God. Each person, that is you, that is me, that is who is in front of you, that is who is behind you, that is who is on your right, that is who is on your left. If you were born, you will die. All of us here are destined to die once and after that comes judgment. Now for Cookie, para mi hermana Cookie, el haber muerto, having died earthly to an earthly death, earthly body, having been saved by grace, having known her Lord and Savior, having not only had a business relationship with Jesus or a ministry relationship with Jesus, but a personal and intimate relationship with Jesus. This woman having had a personal relationship with Jesus, let me tell you what I could say about that. For her to have earthly died was a win. Era ganancia para ella. It was a win. The loss is ours. We're the ones with the void. But she won. She didn't lose. She didn't stay behind. She went ahead. You understand what I'm saying? It's not like we're walking forward, leaving her behind. We're, gonna, we're trying to catch up. She went ahead. That's the way God wants us tonight. Listen, the Lord shared that in my heart so clear this morning. Our view of death. Our view of it. And for her it was a win. It was Apostle Paul that said in Philippians 1.21. He said for to me to live is Christ and to die is winning. Imagine that. To die is winning. See we think to die is losing. But God says to die is winning. Why is it winning Pastor Eddie? Because the same verse in another version it says it so beautifully. It says, to me, living means having Christ. And to die means that I would have more of Him. Yes, 
Give them a hand if you believe that. That's exciting tonight. You know, that gives us hope tonight. Eso nos da esperanza viva. See, that's what the Lord is saying. Listen, to die means that I would have more of him. Paul knew that. You know, you know who Paul uh, was? He was a man who got a glimpse of heaven. He actually, if you read the Bible, he actually got taken up and, and he had a glimpse of heaven. And when he saw heaven, he came and then uh, he, he appears as an apostle. And then he's telling everybody and he says, listen, you know what? I want you to understand that if I was to die today, that is a win for me. And that means that I would have more of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul said, and I believe it. Paul had a glimpse of heaven, and because he had had a glimpse of heaven, he had a struggle in him. And you know what that struggle was? It was right there, Philippians 1, 23 and 24. Look at Scripture. Look at what Paul said. I am torn between the two. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. By far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. See, you know what Paul was saying? He was saying, listen, I think that you guys still can't walk on your own. You can't talk on your own. You can't be mature on your own. But he says, so I'm going to be here a little while longer. But his battle, listen to one of his battles. Imagine the Apostle Paul, one of his many battles was simply that he was torn, estaba roto. And he says, what, what, what are you torn of, Paul? Well, I'm torn because after having a glimpse of heaven, you know what, I, 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 would, I would love to be there because being with the Lord is, is by far, it is much better than dealing with you knuckleheads. And you know what I think Cookie needed to know that we were all left in good hands. You know, one of the things, again, as chaplains, is that chaplains are taught that when somebody's in hospice care, you're not going to go in there and tell them, in the name of Jesus, hop out of that bed and stop taking your meds. You know what you do? You give them dignity. And you let them know that even though it hurts, you're going to be okay. And I believe that Cookie let go when she knew that we would be okay. I really believe that with all my heart. Because Proverbs says very clearly, and it says, The will of the man sustains him through his sickness. I believe that the will, the human will, has a lot to do with the sickness, with sustaining, with pressing through. But as God called her home, I leave you with this. For Cookie, to have gone home was a win, and it was by far much better. But sadly, for those without Christ, it's a huge, huge loss. Why? Because for a person with Christ, death is simply new life. But for the person without Christ, death is all so final. And today, as Cookie joins that cloud of witnesses, and as I get my son, who I asked to just play today because he loved Cookie. Today, as Cookie joins that cloud of witnesses that cheers us on, I believe her desire would be, listen to what I'm going to say very clearly, the salvation of unbelievers The restoration of backsliders and the self examination of those of us who feel we're strong. 
Solomon said it's better to be in the house of the morning than in the banquet because in the house of the morning is a mirror a reminder and a reflection of a bridge we must all cross and the question tonight is what is the other side of that bridge going to look like for you see I'm not going to speak much more about the woman because first of all the woman is not here second of all you guys had way better stories about the woman than I did and third of all because when this woman was in my office not too long ago. And we were going to walk down. She said, Pastor Eddie, thank you for receiving me in your church tonight because I have unfinished business. I'm on a mission. And you know what word she used? I'm on an assignment. And as soon as this woman stepped up here, the handprints of the Holy Spirit were all over her. And I continue that today. And I tell you that tonight, Cookie's last sermon on this platform was not some weeks ago. Cookie's last sermon on this platform is tonight. This is the time for the person far from God. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe a pastor hurt you. Maybe a leader hurt you. Maybe what you've seen has hurt you. Maybe a brother in Christ has hurt you. If you love this woman, which I know you do because you're here, this is the night to give your life to God. Some of us are here and we're far from God. And you know, you come into this place and when I walked in here, it was a family reunion was a family reunion this was no typical home going service you know we could have done the greatest event we could have brought Nikki Cruz and not gathered this crowd you know the only thing that could have gathered this crowd was the life of this woman and tonight I just want to tell you that Sister Cookie, second to the last word, because it wasn't the last word. The last words were, I love you, to her husband. But the second to the last words were salvation. Salvación. Salvación, hermano. That's what it's about tonight, salvación. Restauración. It's time to put everything aside. And listen, I'm not telling you to come to Alcance Victoria, Brooklyn. I'm not telling you to go to North Brooklyn. I'm not telling you to go to Pastor Raymond's church. They're great churches. Great churches. I'm not telling you to go there. I'm just telling you to come back into the kingdom. It's not about one church, it's about a kingdom. And I want you to bow your head right now. Right where you're at. And I want you to examine your heart right now. Just examine your heart. And just say, Lord, you, you could speak there in your mind. You don't have to be loud. My 
See you. 